HPV. HPV is human papillomavirus, and it's vital to include in our discussion on the cervix. So HPV is a DNA virus, which is double-stranded. It infects epithelial cells, which are those cells which line the outer surface of body organs and the interior of cavities. These epithelia include the skin, anus, genitals, and respiratory tract. There are over 100 subtypes of HPV. So when we speak of HPV subtypes, we speak of the low risk types, which include HPV 6 and 11. These result in the formation of cutaneous warts. These are very common benign growths, which are usually found on the hands and feet. They have a characteristic cauliflower-like appearance. Then we've got anogenital warts, which are present on the genital skin. These are typically not painful, but may cause some itching. And we have respiratory papillomatosis. This is a rare condition where HPV warts form on the larynx. These warts tend to recur and may cause problems with breathing. Okay, so then we have the high risk types. The most common are HPV 16 and 18, but others include 31, 33, 35, 39, 45, 51, 52, 56, 58, 59, and 68. These are more dangerous and in fact may result in cancer, mainly of the cervix, anogenital region, and head and neck. In fact, HPV is found in 99% of cervical cancers. Okay, so now how does this happen? So what is the pathology? So this image is representing cervical epithelium. And as we can see, we've got squamous cells on the left and columnar cells here on the right. So this section is representing the transformation zone, where there is constant dividing and replication of cells. This process of proliferation of cells starts from the bottom at the basal layer of the epithelium and makes its way upwards. What HPV does is it enters into a break in the epithelium, making its way to the basal layer and infects the basal cells of the epithelium and begins to replicate. HPV then produces oncoproteins E6 and E7. These proteins interact with tumor suppressor genes, P53, and retinoblastoma protein, PRB. As aptly named, these tumor suppressor genes prevent the formation of tumors, so now in the presence of these oncoproteins, there is uncontrolled abnormal growth of epithelial cells, which may eventually result in cancer. So next, here we've got a pap smear with normal squamous cells over here. And here we've got cells with HPV changes. And these cells are called coilocytes. There are four characteristic changes, and these are nuclear enlargement, with the nucleus two to three times the normal size, an irregular nuclear membrane, hyperchromasia, which is a darker staining of the nucleus due to increased chromatin, and the perinuclear halo, which is a clear area around the nucleus. Okay, so now how is HPV transmitted? So HPV is mostly sexually transmitted. It is the most common sexually transmitted agent. It occurs by contact to genital lesions or genital secretions containing the virus. Microabrasions in the recipient's skin allow the virus to access the basal epithelial layer we mentioned before. Now, HPV can also be transmitted with non-penetrative sex and orogenital contact. HPV may also be transmitted perinatally with an infected birth canal. Now, most HPV infections are subclinical and spontaneous regression tends to occur in one to two years, especially in adolescents. However, there are some risk factors which increase one's risk for obtaining HPV and its persistence. And these are the age at first intercourse, the number of sexual partners, sexual activity with no barrier contraception, high parity, cigarette smoking, poor nutritional status, and immunodeficiency. Okay, so lastly, a note about the HPV vaccine. So here we're going to be talking about Cervarix and Gardasil. Cervarix covers for two HPV types, HPV 16 and 18, and therefore it is bivalent. 
Gardasil first used to cover for four HPV types, 6, 11, 16, and 18, and hence it is quadrivalent. But then they developed the Gardasil 9 vaccine, which covers for nine HPV types. We've got 6, 11, 16, 18, 31, 33, 45, 52, and 58. So it is a non-avalent vaccine. In Malta, there's a national vaccination program set up using Gardasil 9, where this is given to girls aged 12 to 14 in schools. And they are given two doses of the Gardasil 9 six months apart. If over 16 years of age, three vaccines will be required, and these are given over a period of six months. It is important to keep in mind that these vaccines, of course, are preventative and not a treatment. Also, studies have shown that an immunity is not built towards HPV types, so a woman who currently has HPV 16, for example, will still benefit from the HPV vaccine, as she of course is at risk of obtaining the other HPV types, plus she is also at risk of obtaining HPV 16 again. Great. So that is all in HPV. Be sure to take a look at my other videos from my cervical series. Like and subscribe. Thank you.